thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. You get great news, great interviews, great interviewees. So sometimes if you need a touch, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like button and all that jazz. Before further ado, I bring to you Dean Rowland of Soul Asylum. <laughs> So yeah, so yeah, so yeah. You got me. Did I get you? I saw the look on your face. I was <laughs> well. I was like, oh shit! How am I gonna just uh, break the news? Respect- How do you respectfully drop this uh, <laughs> call? No, hey, thanks. It's obviously uh, Dean Roland. You can see him uh, from Collective Soul. How are you doing, buddy? Doing good, buddy. How are you doing? Not too bad. I actually almost forgot about uh, April Fools. I usually forget about that day until uh, you know a friend pranks me or something. Or I'm not on right. Facebook anymore, or Twitter, or Instagram. I just took myself off of social media. So yeah. had I been on it, I'm pretty sure I would have known. But I just found out this morning. I just realized it. So just another beautiful, silly day, isn't it? Right. So are you in? Uh, are you in Georgia right now? No, I am. Um... I live in San Diego, in California. I was just going to say, I see, like, it looks like palm trees. And I was going to ask you, since when did palm trees uh, start sprouting from the, the the Georgia ground? Yeah, they don't. They they definitely don't there. But, you know, I think the, uh, I don't think they're indigenous to California either. They, they've been, they're brought over from, from somewhere. Probably but Hawaii. They, probably. That's what I would imagine. But, uh, yeah, I've lived in California for many years now we still call atlanta like my mom lives there and ed and you know will live there so it's still the headquarters like we base out of atlanta so for rehearsing or you know getting ready for a tour or even recording or whatever we'll, we'll be there i'm there quite often i should say right on um so we're here to talk about here to eternity which is being released may 17th and i mm-hmm. believe the single is getting released next week yes Okay. Mother so what's the, what's the single title and why did you guys choose that one? Because I listened to the album and my favorite tunes on it are Bluer Than Blue. Love that riff. Um, Let It Flow and um, um, what else? Mother's it's, Love. That's that's Mother's Love. Yeah, Mother's Love is a single. And you okay. know what, Ernest, I'm with you, buddy. I was fighting for Bluer Than Blue. I, I, that's the one I wanted to be the first single. But when you go through that process... And there's a, a lot of opinions. Sometimes you have to surrender to, you know, the majority wins kind of thing. So right, right. I, I do, but I love, we, we've been playing uh, Mother's Love on this last tour. The, 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 uh, we were in New Zealand earlier this year and we, we've been playing shows. And it's, it's a fun song to play live. I mean, and people seem to enjoy it. Our fans seem to enjoy it. So, you know. I'm game. Well, Are you, when you go into the studio, you record songs, you know, hopefully any one of them will connect. I mean, you're putting your best foot forward each time. So, But sometimes, I guess, um, if you're a guitar player like you are, um, playing mm-hmm. a song like that is it's a little bit more fun because it has kind of a groove. Like, Well, it does have a groove. It's got a major groove. No, the Mother's Love? Yeah. Well, no. Sorry. Uh, excuse me. Blue Than Blue. Blue Than Blue. Yeah. Well, yeah. Absolutely. It does the... I love that song because it <clears throat> does like the, yeah, I love the chorus melody that Ed came up with. It is that, that riff is fun. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's kind of, to me, I mean, we, we, we just collect a soul. I mean, the, the, the range of type of song is all over the place, really. I mean, we could do, we've done ballads and, but I, I think at the heart, it's like we're a riff based rock band, right? But mm-hmm. you, it's the same. I mean, there's something similar in that in Mother's Love too. So we'll we'll do the. Uh, it goes into that halftime, almost halftime kind of chorus thing that opens up. Some I love it. I'm, I'm you know I'm I'm good with it. I, I love that song. So you guys actually recorded that in my backyard. If you can see over behind me. Where are you? You, you, rec- you recognize that building? Is that Elvis Presley's estate? Oh, uh, you know what that is? That's where he and Priscilla had their honeymoon. Oh, okay, right, right. Yeah. So where he, yeah. So his estate was where, so that was their their first time. That's where they spent their honeymoon. And they loved it so much, apparently, that they bought a place there. So we recorded at the house that Elvis and Priscilla lived in. That that was like, so obviously Elvis owned 
uh, Graceland, but the Palm Springs estate was like his getaway from all of it. He spent his last few Christmases and birthdays and anniversaries there when he could get away from and just hide away really because he just needed to, whether it was from like paparazzi or press or whatever was going on in Graceland, he would spend time there. He actually recorded uh, a couple of gospel records there. When you guys were recording there, how much inspiration, uh, uh, or did I would think you would have got some inspiration? Was there lots of memorabilia around, or was a new owner um, kind of taking that out? No, it was pretty. No, it was it was essentially vacant. That the, our buddies that own the house, they've just been kind of sitting on it for some time, figuring out how to. to what to do with it to maintain the the integrity of it being Elvis's house. So, I mean, most of it, it's like the same, like appliances, the same bathrooms. It was wow. a lot of the same things that were there when, you know, when Elvis passed. So um, we furnished it ourselves and, and put uh, our studio equipment in there. And we, we went to work and you know, made our, made our, did our thing. Wow. Wow. Um, so, do you think any of these cuts are gonna? I mean, you guys have had like, I don't know, half a dozen number one hits. Um, your your biggest single, just on YouTube alone, is seventy one million shine. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, yeah. are you? Do you guys anticipate this one to go a, a level above vibrating in terms of sales? I don't know. I'm, I I don't. I'm not good at gauging those types of things. You know, it's like. I know our passion for for it when we created it and re recorded it and how we feel about it, but I'm not a fortune teller teller on that. Uh, you know, hopefully people like it. Hopefully, no, I, uh, well, I like it. Like it. <laughs> I, I, I like it. I wish, I'm I, hard I, wish I knew that. I wish I knew that uh, that formula. I'd be a little more uh, greedy and I put under. Well, I'd, I'd probably share it. I'd let people know what the key was. But um, no, we we go in and. Our expectations are solely based on what we do for ourselves, and we we hold ourselves to a pretty high standard. And we want to make music that we feel good about, and we feel confident in, and, and put our best offering out there. You know, each time. Right. Um, now the album's not released until May, May seventeenth, but you guys are hitting the road on April twentieth. Um, no, that's just a one off. We we actually start the tour with Hootie and the Blowfish, uh, the end of May. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So you yeah. just, I didn't uh, look that far in the schedule for your tour date. Yeah. So right. just the 20th is, um, just a one off or is it a few? Yeah, it's, just a, it's one show we're playing in, uh, in San Antonio. And then we start the, 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 and that's just, uh, that, that's our own, that's not with Hootie. It's just us. And then we start the, the one with Hootie and Edwin McCain, the end of May in Dallas. Right. Right. Speaking of, um, um different names i mean um i wonder how edwin got his name no i'm just kidding Hootie and the blowfish on this one-off and you've alluded to um your shows recently in, in new zealand you played a couple of the singles off of the new album are you going to be doing that on the 20th yeah just to warm everybody we up will. yeah we'll we'll play we we've been playing um yeah we've been mixing it up a little bit so we'll it's always fun we go after making a new record um it's it's fun and challenging at the same time because you're i think what are we this lady our 12 12 studio yeah. album some some yeah, version of that 12 and 13. Too. yeah 12 and 13 maybe even um so it's we're we have the history of songs that we know we're going to play the kind of the hits or whatever and then there's the older songs that we love playing and then there's the new songs that we feel great about that we're excited to play so it's a little bit of a puzzle to put together um, as you start a tour. So and see what what's working and what we feel good with, what we can pull off. You know, so we'll you know that, that we'll definitely be playing the new stuff. I just and I just uh, yeah, twenty songs. I'm curious as to why you would do a double album. Some bands will do a double album if they haven't released an album in a while, but I guess you guys have so much material that you figure you know doing a double you know double album. Um, you have to include all 20 hit, uh, songs on it because they're all remarkable. 
Well, I don't know that we intentionally went into it thinking we were going to record a double album, but when you every, every recording cycle is different for us anyway. We, we'll go in and um, you look for those creative sparks. You see what's working and what's not working, and and if hopefully best case scenario, you find this creative momentum and you're, you're you get on a roll and we found that thing when we were at elvis's house and we were kind of like we, we we knew we had the house for like four to six weeks some version of that and then we knew like two weeks into it we were just cooking like we were cruising and at that point we were just like hell let's just keep going and, and, and see where this thing lands and possible that when you guys are sleeping, Elvis was whispering in yours to moan, man. We need another one. <laughs> yeah, he's back there just yeah, getting us keeping us uh keeping us straight, pushing us along. And speaking yeah. of um legends, um you, you write it, you have a song on there about Bob Dylan. Yeah. And I got a question for you. <clears throat> Everybody thinks Bob Dylan's a better singer than a songwriter. What's your impression? What what do you say? Is he a better singer or songwriter? Is that a real question or? Oh yeah, that's kind of a real question. It's it's a kind of a, <laughs> it's a kind of a silly question, but yeah. I mean, most people I know, anyways, Dean would say you know Bob Dylan's singing is 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 unique. Let's say that unique. Yeah. But um, it's, it's 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 unique and it's uh distinctively his for sure. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. Wasn't poking um, fun at the late Bob. I was just kind of poking fun, just making a joke. But um, no, he's a I great like songwriter. I, 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 I know I like that for you, sure. I like, where you, you, I like where your joke had that. Yeah, it's uh, it's unique. Everybody will tell you that if they've met if they've met me. Did you see? Did you happen to watch the uh, the We Are the World documentary? Oh, um, um, that song <laughs> We Are the World. But yeah, there's the a documentary movie? on it. it. Yeah, it was on like Netflix or something, but it's like the making of it. So it, it showed the whole night and all those musicians were in one room and Dylan gets up and he's just having a hard time finding his place to sing his uh, his verse. Right. You didn't see it? Did you not see it? No, I didn't, unfortunately. Uh, it's, it's interesting. He can't find his Dylan voice. He's kind of a fish out of water in that whole situation because... And there's a, a scene of Stevie Wonder that has Bob Dylan come up to the piano and he sings Bob Dylan's part like Bob Dylan. So Bob it puts Bob Dylan in the right headspace and the kind of almost like the encouragement or authority to go go sing like Bob. You don't have to sing like these other people. And he does he sings it great. He sings it just like Bob would sing it. But he was having he was having a moment. Wow, I'm gonna have to check that out. I'm pretty yeah, sure it's check on it YouTube, out. It's but pretty, it's pretty interesting. I'll check it out on Netflix. If not, see, I'm up in Canada, eh? like we're right yeah. on the border with Michigan, like right over there is Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, across the St. Mary's River. And you in like Windsor, or where are you? No, we're in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. So, okay. Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, and Sault Ste. Marie, uh, Michigan is across from us. So if you look okay. at a map and you see the three, the three of the great lakes, the big ones, and they all come oh. together, we're in the hub. So okay. if you know anything about Canada, Thunder Bay, or or this is how I would say it, um, be, we're between Winnipeg and Toronto, which is about 30 <laughs> hours. <laughs> so but we're right on the border, right in the middle of yeah. Canada, I swear. If they uh took out one, one of those protractors. They put the the pointy part right in us, and then they circle around Canada, so right in the middle. Okay. Yeah. So, anyways, what what I was going to bring that up is we had uh, we are the world, but we had our um, oh, shoot. I'll have to put it up on the screen when I uh, upload this. But we had our <laughs> own version. It's um, yeah. It's, oh, there was, um, there was a Canadian version. Oh yeah. See, that's why you never heard of it because nobody has. <laughs> Let me. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they had Joni Mitchell singing in it. Um, Brian Adams singing in it. I'm just googling right now. Um, Do it. Uh, Tears are not enough, and there was the Northern Lights, and in the Northern Lights, there was. Let me just take a quick peek for it, and that's that's why 
I probably didn't see that documentary, but um, it was produced by David Foster, and right. it had Gordon Lightfoot, Ann Murray, Burton Cummings, Corey Hart, Brian Adams, Getty Lee, Mike Reno, Neil Young. They're all in it. Well, damn. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna. What's the name of the song again? Tears are not enough. Yeah, I'll send it to. Um, I'll send it to um, Nick. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I'd love. How did I miss that? By the way, that's interesting. What was it around this? It had to be around the same time then. Yeah, yeah. Everybody was doing it, and even the heavy metal artists that I interviewed did, did it with um, Hearing Aid, with um, Ronnie James Dio producing it, and you had all those great guitar players, Satriani, Malmsteen, Neil Sean, they all oh. took part. Um, I won't keep you much longer because I know it's presser day. Um, what was I going to ask you? Um, okay, so you're doing that show. Oh, I want to tell everybody to go to your website because I checked it out and in the merch. And there's tons of really good stuff there, guys, that are like on its um, clearance. Some of the stuff are 5 bucks or 15 bucks that were 40 or 50 So go there and check out the site at uh, collectivesoul.com. Um, I'm going to leave links in the bottom for you guys to just click on. Um, and I think that's about it. We can't wait for that album to come out on the 17th, Tear to Eternity. Yeah. The single's going to be released uh, on your um, YouTube page, Collective Soul, next week? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And what's the page? Is the page just called Collective Soul Official? Yeah. Yeah. All that's it's collectivesoul.com and then all the, the social media handles are pretty much collect your soul, whatever. Perfect. I'll put the links down below for that too. Um, okay, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? Um, engaged. Come on, man. I'm sitting right here. <laughs> subscribe. Everybody do is Dean Roland of uh, Collect Soul says and subscribe to the channel. And last but not least, I always ask this question. Favorite Canadian band or artist, past, present, or well, that's the only two. <sighs> and don't question. say uh -huh. rush. We get that every other. <laughs> I've had 180 interviews and it's rush half yeah. the time. I love rush, but I mean, mine, mine would be Neil Young. I mean, I know he's lived in the U.S. for a while, but originally, yeah, that's Neil. a good. That, that's one of the unique ones. Like, I mean. But about asking that 180 times, I swear to God, I got rushed. No offense, guys, about 9,500 times. They deserve and The other it. ones are Brian, Brian Adams, Loverboy. And then I guess some of the obscure ones. I actually interviewed Harry Shearer. Remember him from his, The Simpsons and Spinal Tap movie? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He said, he goes, The Pursuit of Happiness. I'm like, what? How would you know that band? Know of that band? He's like, no, I always liked that band. And uh, that I love so, Pursuit of Happiness. You do? That's I can't. Wow. Yep. Maybe yep. kickstart them back because I don't know what they're doing. I haven't seen much. I don't know either. Time. I remember Ed, Ed and I loved that one of their records when we were first when we started playing together, like early '90s. I forget the name of the album, but yeah, I, I, I love Pursuit. They were great, great songs. Well, I'll just tell you right now what that album is. Just give me two seconds, and I'll let you go. Okay. Um, they had. Shooby doobies. Okay, here we go. Sorry. Um, ba -bum -bum -bum. It's not. Shows a lot of awards. Another band, this. another Canadian band that I love um, <clears throat> is uh, more obviously more current than Neil, but or right, you know, Broken Social Scene. I, I, I love those records. Oh, yeah, for sure. Big no, fan. Definitely. Um, I can't find this. I'm not going to waste your time. But anyways, <laughs> um, right. thanks a lot for your time, buddy. Um, hope to see you at that show in Grand Rapids. Uh, or not Grand Rapids. Um, the one at uh, Clarkston Pine Knob. Great, you played there before oh, cool. the Pine Knob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great venue, things. and that's with Hootie and the Bullfish, and and Edwin Mc Mc. Um, up, up, um. Bear with me, man. Sorry, McCain. Edwin McCain, McCain. So I have oh, Ed, yeah, Edwin McCain. Yeah. Yeah. And so. we're doing we're at, we're actually playing with uh your native Canadians, uh bare naked ladies are on a few of these shows as well. I think I saw yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing, Minus uh, one. 
I, more, I thought it was more than one, but we're we're playing at Fenway Park, and uh, bare naked ladies are playing. We're all playing together. Is is Stephen Page in the band? Anymore? Like I know he got no. sort of kicked out, so he's not back. Okay. I don't know the I don't know all the details of it, but he's not in the band. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> Something happened and life goes on. So, anyways, yep. um, yeah. So I'll uh, put those links and then I'll send you a link of that uh, song and. Uh, yeah, man. Thanks for taking the time out for us. Yeah, buddy. Thank you, Ernest.